Praise the Lord. Amen. Oh, the uh, past couple of days of <clears throat> hearing the same thing over again when I wake up. And then it, something about the blood of Abel that cries out from the earth. And then I wondered about what it is about our natures that just won't allow us to love one another the way God loves us. Now, God loves us a lot more than we love ourselves, I can tell you that. And a lot more than we love one another. And that's a part of the problem. I've tried to share where I believe that root of bitterness has come forth among the brethren and why there's so many divisions. When I was a younger man, when I first came into the faith, uh, my desire was to go to these different types of churches, the Lutheran Church, the Catholic Church, the Baptist Church, and since they were all pretty much located in the same area, I lived in a, a fairly good-sized city, Toledo. It's not a small town, but it's a, it's a good-sized city. And so you would have these different types of congregations all within a three-block range of each other. And uh, so my thought was, if I would just get in there and start to try to understand what the Lutherans point of view was and the Catholic point of view and the Baptist point of view that perhaps I could help you know by going between these different churches to help them start to uh, come together to understand one another and to see that there was no reason for each one of them to be divided that's I mentioned to you guys that uh, uh, division, or uh, I should say unity, has, has been a very important part of my life. My sister um, Lynn mentioned that perhaps that there may have been some connection to my violent uh, uh, upbringing. And uh, I agree there was. Uh, a lot had to do with... Uh, childhood and divorce and all the hatred and fighting that I saw as a child and then as a young adult in Vietnam and before that uh, President Kennedy's assassination and Martin Luther King I mean these were all traumatic uh, episodes of in a society uh, that affected the children as well not just the adults so and then we had uh, integration uh, you know, there was a lot of animosity and hatred in that, and, and the kids were all, you know, reflecting that from off of their parents. So the 60s were a very turbulent period of time. <clears throat> so when I came into the Lord, that was probably the single most important issue in my life, was to see... Uh, because along with that, we had had uh, the younger people of the country uh, trying to come together in unity. Now there were, you know, peace movement and, and so on and so forth. But then we had the, the battle against that and then we get, you know, four dead in Ohio, you know, that's uh, Kent State. So, very bad period of time. Anyway, Bringing all these thoughts together, the blood of Abel that cries out from the earth, you know, why did Cain slew Abel? And then you start to look at why men do what they do to one another. <clears throat> and it becomes very apparent, okay, uh, why these things take place. So when I came into the faith anyway, I, my hope and desire was to see unity, healing, restoration. 
course, little did I know that that's what I was being prepared for at the time. Because you have to see it and, and have a desire for it in order for it to be revealed to you, uh, which, you know, was part of the prayers that I had asked as a child, that I might understand why my parents uh, acted the way they did to each other and, uh, you know, why there was so much uh, hatred in the world and division. <coughs> so, uh, that being what it was, um, that was my desire. Of course, I started to do that, uh, going to each one of them, but then, you know, life came in. Life, life comes in in each one of our lives. I mean, that's part of what life is. Uh, regardless of what your belief might be, uh, you still have to deal with everyday life. One of my, one of my single most, uh, uh, my hardest, uh, um, I don't know what you want to call it, uh, hardest situation to deal with for me when I would study the Word of God is that there never seemed to be any personal daily, I mean at least I wasn't seeing it. Perhaps it, it was written there, amen, to be seen, but I, I couldn't see it in the Word, where anybody was talking to one another personally, okay, they were talking to each other in a group, and, uh, but it didn't seem like anybody was sharing uh, their personal struggles in life. It was all about the church and in the church, but nothing about what was going on with a person in their own lives relative to the work and the will of the Father taking place in them and through them. So that there was no daily thing, I guess. I, I just couldn't connect that. Uh, and that later on in my life, that's where AA came in and was so important and has been so important to me because they seemed to have given me something that I could see in their little program there of coming together uh, at least once or twice a week or as often as you feel need for to fellowship with one another with others who are are uh, being restored or healed delivered from uh, alcohol and drugs the use thereof and so that worked for me once I was willing to let go which was a which was as I had mentioned to you before it was when I let go and let God, when I finally uh, had died to myself and to, to the things in this world that were no longer important to me, I, there was a lot of <laughs> brothers and sisters. There's just no way around there being a lot of suffering involved in our learning obedience. Okay, uh, that's just the way it is for us. Jesus learned obedience through the things he suffered. And he's our type. Okay? So that's, that's how you're going to learn obedience, whether you want to or not. Um, and that suffering has to do with personal relationships, uh, childhood, divorce, uh, divorces uh, in your early life, um, ch children uh, being torn apart as friends in the neighborhood, uh, different avenues of which were caused to come into and suffer, okay, these things. Now, amen, Jesus, by the grace of God, I, I, I suppose you know, this is a testing of your hearts, is what those things do to you, okay, what the outcome of those separations and, and uh, acts of uh, violence that you may be involved in, um, 
how will you respond to them? Will, do you get upset and mad and angry at others for what's gone on in your life? Or do you look to God, okay, uh, help trying to find out how, you know, these things took place, what your part was in it? You know, are, are you open to those thoughts? And that really determines, I think, your heart, what you're really all about. And those are the trials and the testings of our faith as well. Because then they become connected to our belief system. Once we've asked the Lord into our heart and life, now, okay, we've got an element that's entered into our life that was not there prior to it. And for myself, I was, like I said before, I was 25 years old. Uh, gone through all of that. And uh, before I asked the Lord into my heart and life to be my Lord and Savior. Heart and life, Lord and Savior. So you see the two different issues there? And uh, <clears throat> so there's a, a deliverance, Savior, and Lord, submission. So submission and deliverance, restoration. Um, and that's what begins to start to take place with He tears down and he builds up inside of us. He tears down and he builds up. I was thinking this morning, I woke up and Lord, I need a companion. <laughs> yeah, it's tough getting up mornings all the time. You know, I've been alone now for quite a while and and then I thought of my thought about the other part of what companionship as a husband and wife means, and I don't know that I really want to get involved in that because it's you know my history, and and that really soured me to that because I, I had a real problem with it, and I, I was sick for a long time with that, and uh, which I'd like to straighten out is that, is that although the act is violent in its nature it was never meant that way in my heart I wasn't thinking about that I was truly I was truly obsessed addicted to uh, and uh, and there's no way around it that was wrong and, and uh, it required my my desiring what I wanted without concern for someone else and uh, that's what violence is so regardless if there's actually a physical violent act involved that you would, in your mind, think is physically violent. I mean, emotionally, it was violent. So, that's, that's where that, and, and because of that, I, it, it soured me uh, to any kind of uh, interpersonal relationship that would develop into something that would become intimate. So, and so it's 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 it isn't a, a reaching too far for my sister Linda to come to the conclusion that perhaps that is at the root uh, of what she sees as my uh, apparently my lack of love for the brother and and that this has been mentioned to me before <laughs> from others. And so I resist that because I don't believe that's true in the sense that I understand what true love is. Now, in a natural, intimate, emotional, okay, huggy-poo, kissy-bear kind of superficial love, which is what most of the world knows about, okay, and experiences, even in their marriages, because that's all they're really about. There are no deep, very few, if any, deep, okay, relationships of which you've actually laid your lives down, okay, to one another. The marriages that, that do last for any period of time are those marriages that do learn 
to lay down their lives to one another. But the vast majority do not, and that's why nearly half of everyone who ever gets married is divorced within the first three to five years, and very few last be beyond seven to 13 years. By then, most marriages are uh, at least half, if not uh, more, uh, end. Because it's not in us to do that, okay? And that's where you need to go at, and that's where the Word of God teaches us that dying to ourselves, okay, makes it possible for Christ to live through us, okay? His Spirit. And His Spirit, no greater love shall one brother, man, son, brother, sister, aunt, whatever, no greater love shall you show to another but that you lay down your life one for another. And that means you have to die to this life. You can't lay something down that you're not already dead to. You can't put that aside. If these emotions and feelings and things that are really just superficial, okay, have not been put aside because you're going to have jealousy, envy, strife. That's where it comes from, from the very nature of of who we are. That's why Cain slew Abel. So, that being what it is, and the uh, thought I've been having, and the, the direction that I've been led here in the last week or two to begin to start to go back down there uh, to that fellowship, and to start a, a, a study here in my home, I've come to the conclusion that, you know, now here, here's where my thinking would have led me and I shared it the other day. By the way, I did change the, ti the title at the top of it on the paper. Uh, remember I talked about the Spirit-led, Holy Spirit-led Bible study and fellowship. While I go on to talk about the topics I want, I think, separation of the wheat and the tear, man-child ministry, okay? You know what I noticed about all of those things? The bond woman, the son of perdition, the horror of Babylon, and the harlot church. You know what I noticed about all those things? They're topics of which we are divided about on. They're topics of division. So this morning there was a, what came to mind was topics of discussion. Unity, restoration, healing, and deliverance. You see the difference there? These, unity, restoration, healing, and deliverance, these are topics of which we can all share in to learn to grow in to help others to come into. Now, I firmly believe in the restoration of the church, that it needs to be restored. It needs to be healed. It needs to be delivered from where it's been in the bondage, okay? It, it doesn't know it's been in, but that it has been in. <clears throat> this is where the separation, because just like I had mentioned, it's the outcome of where your heart really is at, is how you'll end up picking up on this. And I don't believe anyone whose heart isn't right before the Lord is actually going to begin to come in too those the revelation, the revealed word of the Father, because it's the revealed word of the Father that I believe starts to bring forth that restoration. Uh, there was a young lady on uh, video the other day from Canada, amen Jesus, <coughs> I tried tracking it back down again before I came out here to share this morning, but there, there it is. She came right out and talked about types and shadows of those things. Okay, which is the doorway we enter into in order to come into the revealed word of the Father, which is what Jesus said he would build his church upon, the bedrock of the Father. So that's the direction, folks, for those who are actually interested uh, in the restoration of the church, that my brothers and sisters might be set free from the bondage they've been in, in and among these households of faith, and among you who are still in bondage, even though you're not in these households 
because it's my belief, it's the church in general. And if you think that you're, or believe by faith, that you're a part of that church, well then you too need healing, deliverance, and restoration. We all do. As my sister Lynn has pointed out, and I have never denied that I was not a part of that body of which needed healing, restoration, and deliverance. We all do. And when we get our eyes off of what divides us and gets our eyes on what brings us together as one, all right, my belief is what brings us together as one, okay, is the Word of God. But the Word of God said He came to bring a sword, division. It was never supposed to have been among the brethren. So somewhere along the line, that sword that you use, okay, to divide has to become that shaft or that uh, sickle that gathers in the wheat. It, it, it has to change hands. And so to me, that's the changing of the ministry from the in-part ministry to the finished work ministry of the man child. So, there's a lot more to come. So we're going to work on this a little bit more, and now it'll be a Holy Spirit-led Bible study and fellowship with the topics of unity, restoration, healing, and deliverance. Amen? So, praise God. Uh, as we teach, we are taught, brothers and sisters. That's the way it is. We grow, we learn. So my sister still wants to have a little bit of a Bible study, and I had give, but was given a thought, the thought that, uh, okay, great, I will do that. But, you know, to me, uh, it's not good to approach the Lord if you have all against your brother or your sister, or if you're in disagreement, that you should come uh, together in peace and really set out uh, in prayer before you even begin uh, to study the Word of God so that uh, you understand what it is that you're asking from the Father, you know? And that's, that's the sense of agreement and peace that I would like to see my sister and I come into first. And then, if she's willing to have the Lord help us to understand what His will is in this matter regarding her moving, Amen. Which you'll notice that of all the conversations that went on on the video, not one person suggested my sister and I enter into prayer. <laughs> not one. Which is the key, okay, that we come before the throne of God and make our request be known. Amen. So, by the grace of God, that's exactly what we're going to do. And I'm believing in a good outcome. I'm hoping and believing that my sister is still going to put this move off until after the 1st of January. But if not, then at least we will have opened up the door for us to continue in fellowship and in the study of the Word of God in love and peace, which to me is the most important issue. I, I, I don't think my sister nor I have a problem with disagreeing about one particular aspect of one part of our lives at this one period of time. I mean, she's 66 and I'm 63. We're, we're both looking at uh, mortality in a, with a clearer set of eyes than we were at 20. These are kind of the issues that could have separated young people, brothers and sisters and among a family, uh, when they were youthful and uh, had, as far as they were concerned, an entire life, you know. Well, when you get older, you know you don't have that kind of time. And you're very careful about how you deal with one another. So we're able to do that, matured enough to be able to separate this one issue out of our overall love for one another. So, um, which has always been at, at the root I, I didn't come against my sister in this because I didn't love her. I, I came against her, as I've said with you before, when I come against those who are offering things that I believe are harmful to the body. 
I don't do it. I receive them as brothers and sisters, but I come after them, exhortation, admonition, and rebuke in love. It's really because I love them, and I believe that if they'll stop and just listen to what's being shared with them, that maybe they'll reconsider what it is they're saying. All right? So it's been in love, Sister Lynn. So uh, I love you guys. The Lord be with you and bless you in Yeshua's name. Amen.